This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2024 StarCraft Superlight. The model number is 241BH as in bunkhouse. Okay. So I'm just going to show you some of the features of this trailer. This is not a floor plan. It's a how-to video. So I'm going to just show you some of the features and how they work. Okay. So you have regular crank down stabilizers here. Scissor type. Use a three-quarter inch crank, of course. You have a kitchenette area outside where you have a refrigerator here. You can add a, 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 a griddle or a grill or whatever you want in here. There is a, a, a quick connect right here, if you can see it right here, for the LP system. So you could connect an appliance with a quick connect hose, LP hose, okay. Um, we move forward. You have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. You have a uh, range hood vent for the range hood over the or, or the range hood vent over the stove. If you're running the fan, you want this baffle flapping freely like it is now. So anytime you're running the fan, you want it flapping freely. Uh, that is your furnace vent there. Here we have um, a spray port. Or a coil spray that comes with it. Some 110 AC here. We have uh, okay. your um, your uh, water heater here. Now this this runs on 110 AC and on LP gas. So there's two switches inside the trailer. One to uh, to operate the electric heated element that's behind this cover here. And then the other switch to operate this gas uh, valve here. Right now this is empty and bypassed because the trailer is winterized. So it's empty right now. This is the anode rod slash drain plug right here. Um, remember when you're getting ready to use it again and you put the drain plug in there, you screw it back in. It takes an inch and a sixteenth, six point, uh, six point uh, socket to do that, to, to uh, screw it in and take it out. Um, once you once you screw that drain plug back in, you got to remember to fill the water tank with water. So you're just going to hook up the city water, for example, and then you'll turn on a hot water valve in the trailer and, and let it fill. Uh, never run it dry without water in it, or you'll damage it. Okay, that's important. Okay, all right. So as we move forward, this is just telling us that this is pre-wired for a Furion. A three camera backup kit so um, you have a camera on this side here and a camera on the other side you don't have one but you have a, the mount for it it's pre-wired so if you were to purchase the camera kit it, it consists of a, a monitor panel that goes in your tow vehicle the backup camera in the back and then a left and a right uh, uh, camera here so this piece would just come right off and the camera plugs in so it's a pretty simple install you could also, if you didn't want to replace, if you didn't want three cameras, for example, you can just use the one camera system with the backup camera back there and, and uh, plug it in. That's made by Furion. We sell them here. Um, uh, it, just, uh, it just makes it easier when you're traveling to see what's happening around the trailer and easier to back up, that's all, okay? So that's an option. Um, your coiled sprayer here, or your coiled hose and your sprayer here. This is your three-quarter inch uh, crank, and this is a three-quarter inch attachment that goes into a into a drill. Okay, it snaps in there. Okay, and that's just a junction box and a cap. This is a kill switch for your battery, so you can shut this on and off. Let me look out here real quick. Yes, so you can turn it on and off right there. Um, this is your um, uh, your solar controller. So this will right now it's scrolling through the different options. Um, I'll tell you the most important things that this 63 degrees Fahrenheit and our 13.4 volts DC in the system, right? Um, I'll let it come around again and I'll tell you the amps that are gain, being gained from the sun. 5.7 amps 
DC are being converted by sunlight and stored in your battery. Okay. Um, 13.4 DC and 4. Point, well, that ended at 3.8 again, uh, being converted to DC power and, and stored in your battery. So it just tells you everything you need to know and then some. You can also get an app, for, an, the app for this, and look at it on your phone. Okay. All right. So you can read more about that too. There's literature that comes with it. Plus, you can always go to the Go Power website. They got tons of videos and and pay and uh, PDFs to look at. So okay. All right, so you have a deep cycle marine battery, two um, 12 volt, or I'm sorry, two, two uh, LP tanks with a regulator, automatic changeover regulator, like I said, a 12 volt DC um, um, deep cycle battery. You have your uh, power tongue jack, which is great. It makes it easy to hitch and unhitch, okay? You also get a light with it. And if this ever fails, meaning you can't, it stops working so you can't hitch and unhitch, you can just pull this pl rubber plug off the top here and use the three quarter inch drill attachment or the three quarter inch crank and just crank it manually up and down to get yourself out of trouble. Alrighty, this is uh, your docking light there. And this is your pass through storage from the other side. There's also a, um, a uh, it's not in here yet, but there's also a, uh, uh, a uh, dump hose that comes with this also and there is your reducer to reduce you down from a 30 to a 20 amp if you need to plug it in at home okay all right so as we move around this is your power cord here 30 amp and 30 foot long your docking station is here um, so Right now, this blue valve is in, the, is in the vertical position, right? And you can see when it's in the vertical position right here, it's city water. So you got your water hose hooked onto here, you turn it on, and, and it's, everything's going to run off of city water. It'll send, uh, send water to all the different, uh, uh, you know, all your different uh, um, faucets and, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, that's the most common way to get water to the trailer is city water hookup. Now, if you're camping someplace that doesn't have city water hookup, let's say you're boondocking it or whatever, you can turn it to this position, and, it, and it's, now it's, it's horizontal, it says tank fill. So this will fill your fresh water tank, right? Therefore, when you get to the campground, you can turn on the electric water pump and pump the water from the tank. All the plumbing will work as though you have city water, you'll just be pumping it from the tank. So it gives you two options for water. The most common one is just city water, which most people use. And then those rare times when you're boondocking, you'll, you can fill your tank and use that for, for, um, for your water source, okay? Now, this is another place where that blue coil sprayer hooks up to right here. Now, this right here is your, is your black tank flush, right? This is the sticker for the black tank t flush. It says, do not use the, t the tank valve unless it's completely open by open we're talking about right here let's see it's on this side excuse me this this black tank valve right here should be completely open and then you have the gray on this side black is toilet water and waste gray is sink and shower water so you have that blank that that valve all the way open on the black the black tank valve then you'd hook the hose here at the dump station up, turn it on, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, flush it out really well. It'll spray off the sensors so you're, uh, you get a really good accurate reading from the, your, your level sensors uh, on your black tank. So it's a, if there's a working hose, it's a really good idea to, uh, to use, the, use the black tank flush, okay? Sometimes the dump stations don't have a working hose, but generally they do. All right, so that's your backup camera uh, pre-wire housing right there. Remember, I explained you could use you could get the three camera system or just the one camera system for this back one. It's made by Furion. We sell them here. You can get them elsewhere, but um, just make sure you get the right kit for your your system. Okay, ladder, which makes it easy to inspect the roof. The manufacturer states every 90 days you should inspect the roof. Um, go up there or have somebody go up there, look around, make sure there's no cracking or separation at any of the sealant or caulk where water could get through. Make sure there's no damage to the 
uh, roofing material or roofing attachments by let's say low branches or road debris that sort of thing you just uh, stay ahead of any issues you might have you can't see what's happening on the roof unless somebody's up there looking so it should be part of your regular maintenance um, you always want to uh, know what's happening on your roof so make sure that's part of your uh, your um, regular maintenance okay. so the furnace is kicked on here this is your control panel right here it's kind of hard to read at this angle but um, you can extend your awning right here power awning right never leave it out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite roll it in otherwise you can get get damaged very quickly by the weather this is your slide room here you just hold it till you hear that ratcheting sound your lights here your water pump is right here you use that to pump water out of the fresh water tank if you if you're boondocking and you don't have city water it's also used to winterize the trailer to light your water heater on gas is right here there's the light there and to turn on the electric heating element is right here never run the water heater without water in the tank um, and then you have your battery and your black tank and your great tank and your fresh water tank they graduate up in 130 increments okay alrighty so you have bunks here of course they come around the corner you have a AM FM radio Stay with me one second. I'm not seeing the trick to this. Oh, that okay, that's the trick. You just poke it. Some of them you have to hold for a few seconds. Other ones you just quickly poke it. So I'm going to go into this literature bag here where they all, generally the remotes are in here too. So there's your JBL remote. And what else do we have over there? A TV remote also should be here somewhere. So there, there's a the paperwork for your solar controller we talked about and this is the remote for your television here okay so with the with the JBL system you have a uh, uh, AM FM radio you have um, Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet you have um, uh, A and B zones A is inside the trailer B is outside the trailer so you can you can listen to one or both um, and uh, it, has, it has pretty much everything you need and then some so keep that in mind the most commonly used is, is I'm sure is the, uh, is, the uh, a, is the FM radio and the Bluetooth I would imagine okay also your TV uh, let's see what we have here it's a smart TV they give you a uh, a buckle here so you can and a strap so you can um, strap it in place when you're traveling so it doesn't bang around and get damaged I just want to get back here so you can see what it looks like back here you have a swing out bracket um, you have your uh, uh, satellite and your TV and your cable it's hooked up for for satellite and TV right now um, if I look up here let me go up here yeah so this right here is this is your second TV hookup this is in the bedroom they give you a backing plate you can get a bracket that swings out so you can see it while you're laying down in bed but you can see this is lit up here I can shut it off but if I do it'll get a lousy picture here and and up there so this is the switch for the the digital signal booster the digital antenna um, so because this LED is on, it's telling you that the antenna is on, which you want it, you want it to be on or it'll get a lousy picture. Like I said, you can shut it off right there, but you want it on so you get a good picture. So if you ever, you're not getting a good picture and you're on antenna, make sure you have that button turned on. Sometimes it's the buttons over here. That's why I had to go look for it. Sometimes it's on this one here. Sometimes it's in the other room. So, okay. All right. I got to pick up the pace here. I only have a limited amount of time. Okay, so your microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood we talked about. Uh, fan, 
you're running the fan, you want to open the baffle outside so it vents to the outside. You have light. You have um, range. I'll just go through the basic thing here. You have three knobs here. You have a fourth one over here, which is the sparker. And then the one over here is the oven knob. Then you have uh, ambient, ambient light and then oven light down there, okay? So let me see if there's any gas up here. This was just hooked up, so it'll take a minute or two to work the gas back to the burner here. There we go. But once you've done that, because like I said, it was just hooked up, once you've done that, it'll start first click every time. The oven is the same way. You have to read a little bit on it, but there's a pilot light down here. You have to light. And, um, and any time, once you've lit the pilot light, you're, you're, you're using the, uh, you know, it's cycling as it, as it does, you know, on, let's say, 350, whatever. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Always travel with this shot here. Your keys are hanging right here. This is your power converter right here. Right. So this converts converts AC to DC power. So when you're plugged into shore power, you have 110 AC at these circuit breakers here. These are just like the ones you'd have at home, and they're labeled, right? 110 AC. Then, then the power is converted to 12 volt DC in here, so you have a couple of breakers and then some uh, 12 volt DC fuses, right? And they're all labeled. So that's where the 12 volt comes from. This is also a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy that your battery up front on the tongue needs, and it'll always keep it charged. It'll send enough amps to keep it charged um, when you're plugged into shore power. When you're pulling it down the road, you're... you're uh, tow vehicle's alternator will be sending power through the charge line to keep your battery charged and just throughout the day your solar panel will be sending energy to the battery through the solar panel to keep it charged as it can depending on the, the conditions outside okay three ways to charge your battery this is a carbon monoxide LP gas detector right here it should always be green if not get it serviced obviously that's important if it goes off, it's telling you you've got carbon monoxide or LP gas issue, so you want to make sure it's always working. If it's not green, get it serviced, like I said. Okay. Now, you can, you can drop the, pull the legs off the table here and drop the tabletop onto these cleats, these four cleats here, and uh, then use the cushions to fill in the space, turn this into a bed. You have two bunks here, wide bunks, by the way which are, are kind of unusual. You, you, you don't see them that wide normally, so that's good. Uh, your refrigerator is 12 volt DC. That's the freezer, obviously. 12 volt DC, and, and also it's not, yeah, uh, it opens both ways. So, there you have it. Technology marches on, see? Okay. Um, this is this thing here is a, is you can scan this code. Basically, this is for for a public Wi-Fi booster. It can if you were to it'd be interested in it. It's pre-wired for this, and basically it'll consist of an antenna that goes on the roof, and a, a router box that fits right here. It's about maybe eight or eight or ten inches across, whatever squared. Um, at this router part. So if you were to purchase it, it'll, there'll be a there is a, a place on the roof for the antenna to hook up, and then this place right here. If your family uses a lot of Wi-Fi, it's a really good way to boost your wi public Wi-Fi signal. So if you're interested, that's another option. I told you about the TV over here. There's some storage underneath here. You have an emergency window, so you would push this all the way through, all the way through, and then grab a hold of the red tab and pull the screen out and that way you can escape during an emergency okay all right so we'll move to the the bathroom here okay we're still cleaning in here but you have um your your sink and shower work like any other sink and shower um you have a GFCI in here. All the, remember, all the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside, are wired to a GFCI. So if you're if you're using something outside, it pops. You're going to reset it in here. The toilet is typical RV toilet. There's the flush pedal right there. Um, 
when you get to the campground, that's antifreeze right there. So when you get to the campground, um, you hook up your power and your water. Then you'll come in here and you'll put a dose of chemical right in the bowl. And then you'll stand on the pedals and water will come swirling around and um, fill, start to go into your black tank below along with your, your toilet chemicals. So you stand on that pedal long enough to put at least a gallon of water in there. Uh, you can use more but not less. So you want, you want a dose of chemical and at least a gallon of water in the, in the uh, toilet black tank before you start using it. If you don't do that, it'll, it'll be considered using it dry and that, that'll smell super terrible plus it'll get clogged up. So you always want chemical and water in there when you start off, okay? All right, and of course your fan is up there. Okay, so let's see what else. I don't know if I, I think I might have went over this. Let me do it, do it again just in case. Turning it on, um, go to the mode button for example. We'll go to heat right there. So the furnace will kick on. Um, if we want to cool air conditioner when it kicked down, it's, it's self-explanatory. Um, and to see what you're set at, we're set at 69 degrees, and right now it's 68 outside, or in here, I should say. So we're pretty, we're pretty close. I can go up a little ways. It should kick right on. But you can set fan speed from here. It's got zones, different programs. Uh, so actually, there's no, there's only one zone on this one. This, that's this zone. But this, this has an app also. Keep in mind that most of these things I'm showing you have apps these days. So you can scan this and download the app for this. I highly re recommend getting the app for your solar controller. It just makes it much easier. Um, so on and so forth. Okay. Alrighty, so let me look around, make sure I covered everything. I think I did. Yes, yes. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every uh, 90 days. You can go every 60 days, but the thing is it should be part of your regular maintenance to understand what's happening on your roof. You're just protecting your investment. And right now this is winterized, meaning the water's been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze. Your water heater is bypassed and empty right now. So uh, never run the water heater without water in the water heater tank. Okay? Thank you very much.